Thank you, Chris. Welcome to the September 27th, um, 2016 uh, Board of Selectmen's meeting here in the Town Hall uh, on Conway Street. It is 5.05 p.m. Um, we have a couple items in to discuss in open meeting and then we're going to go into executive session for collective bargaining reasoning. Okay. Um, Kip, uh, at the end of our meeting um, last week, you had um, presented us with FYI kind of um, proposal and we didn't have a chance to discuss it because both Trevor and I were pretty sick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so would you like to go over that with us? Uh, sure. Um, it, it's it's no secret that I've been working on uh, you know an alternative um, ho home for um, our EMS service um, to put it on town-owned property adjacent to the fire station, and um, you know I've been looking at a couple of different ways of funding that, and that um, I, I think that uh, you know I I think that it's my gut feeling that the citizens of Deerfield would be, if necessary, willing to pay to uh, put up a building to keep the service here. Um, I think it's a better location uh, because of its access to the highways and the ability of the ambulance to control the lights. Um, and I, I think we could uh, do a, a building that would be very energy efficient and keep the overhead uh, extremely low for the service um, to operate, which would lower the um, um, I guess adjustment or payments from all the communities to the service. And I also think that's very important that this service have a place of its own where all of the ambulance and all of the personnel can be in one location under one roof. And uh, I, I, I don't want this to go on any longer just to uh, keep everybody happy and keep this service uh, you know, going the way it is. Um, so a, a couple of things that... Uh, you know, we could do is maybe perhaps put out an RFP for professional services for design, engineer, and construction of this building instead of spreading it out, put it out to firms um, that can do all three things for us, it would sure expedite the whole process. Yeah. Um, and then we could come up with uh, an exact dollar amount and we could go forward from there. Um, but I think that's a good place to start with that. Um, I know that you had presented a few weeks ago um, that you thought you could build that building up there if you were doing it privately, like through a donation, for around 350. And so you're, you know, when you involve the town, it like doubles. So you are talking about something less than a million dollars, right? Yes, I, I the you think so. The building, if it was done privately, would be under four hundred thousand uh, dollars completed. Um, it would be well under a million dollars, even if it was done through private, uh, through public funding and stuff like that. Um, I recently had reached out to the town of Southwick because I had learned of a process that they went through, mm. and I spoke with their town administrator as well as the the contractor who did the building and got a lot of good insight. Oh, good. Um, there was even actually, um, the town administrator told me that part of their library renovation received us, I don't want to blow this, but it was a special act through our legislature to allot, permit them to not go with prevailing wage, which kind of goes against all things, but they found out that the state had done this for the city of Chelsea for $1.9 million. And the people of Southwick were only looking for somewhere in the vicinity of 600,000. So they got it. And, you know, and he, he, he kind of steered me down that path as well. So it's something that I'm, I'm looking into as well. Um, you know, not counting on that, but it's just right. something else. So I'm, I'm trying to find out as much information, no matter which way we go, Right. Um, which would be the most economical and expeditious way of doing this, you know? Um, I, 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 I'm not disagreeing with you. I mean, the town turned down 1.2 million addition on the garage. It's too expensive. And, um, you know, we had, to, I, I mean, just based on our 
experience with the garage. Nobody was interested in like a $3 million or $4 million separate building. But it is our town-owned property. So if we do a special town meeting before Thanksgiving and we move ahead as much as possible, we could have the information together for November. Sure. And, and, I, and I, think, I think people would support it. Well, I mean, because if, if it's a wash, I mean, if it's cheap enough, mm -hmm. if you can do this cheap enough, why wouldn't we do this? Well, I think we have some information in front of us that probably I mean, wasn't available, either. you know, five years ago, four years ago when this all started. Right. First of all, we, we do realize that this ambulance service costs us, I think, $1.1 million annually, but we generate about $400,000 thousand-plus dollars from the service. So to the communities, it's around $600,000, give or take. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, whether or not this figure is going to go up, I, I don't want to count on. But now, if we also charge rent, although Deerfield is paying 52% of it, we would generate a small amount of income of roughly $20,000 a year to mm -hmm. offset the cost of this. Yes, it would be a 30 plus year payback at that way, right. but I mean, you know, I don't think people care about that, yeah, it, honestly. Keeping this service here is, 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 I think, pretty important. And that's what I've been hearing from you know, people who's emailed me, spoke to me. I mean, when we had that um, barbecue for the seniors, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a dozen people spoke to me about that, about the importance of keeping their, their felt of keeping it in town. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also did check into you know, the current lease um, that they have with the fire department, which is basically they do have a home until 2018. I'm not saying that I want it to go anywhere near that. Right. I really feel confident this thing could be up and running before this year's term ends July 1 of 2017. I was just going to say, if, if, if we move on this and we figure out the financing. Um, and we, we sell it to the town. Yeah, and we, right, and we go through all our meetings and we get approval. Do you, uh, this is a fairly simple building. This mm -hmm. is an extremely simple building. Can, I mean, and it's gonna be on slab, right? Yes. So do you think we can pour the slab and build the building within a couple months? Well, yes, you could, but to complete the building, you're probably looking at three to four months. And, and only because of you know the the different types can of you, wiring. When can so you like, when can you pour the slab? You can do it anytime. You can do it year round. Okay. Yep. yep. So I mean, if, when you build in the winter time, it does present more challenges. More but time. you know, th there's all kinds of different blankets that they, you can use, and if you keep working, the frost definitely will set in. Uh, but the, the idea is that you don't just stop. You know, every day you're there. Only weekends you're off. But there's different types of protection that you can do. But yeah, I mean. They, there's all kinds of additives that they put in concrete, right. so you, you basically work your own. It's just more uncomfortable for the workers. You know, things just don't go as fast. Uh, if you end up with a lot of snowstorms, you spend a lot of time cleaning, but yeah, you, you can go. Well, I mean, if we started in March, March, mm. April, May, June, June July. So it'd be done by July, yeah. I mean, and by I, March, it clears up pretty good. Yeah. You know. I mean, I, and over there, the, it's quite sandy. I mean, there's a good chance that you could start probably even early, depending on the amount of frost right. and stuff. That right. would give us a lot of time to get all these things lined up and, and be ready to go. And, well, yeah. yeah. All right. I mean, I, I, I think, I I think, think it's worth, worth pursuing. I think it's you? worth pursuing and at least, like you said, getting a, um, an en engineered and figure out what the true cost is. Yep. Then we can speak intelligently to the town folk and say, sure. this is what we're thinking. This is what we think it's going to cost. Yep. This is why we believe it would be best in our town and best in that location, um, and 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 get the feedback, see what sure. people feel about it. It's true. Um, we won't know until we ask. So. And and the, the thing about this too that people have to realize is that if we if the decision is made to go to Waitley, mm -hmm. Waitley has. I don't know if they have a firm number for the rent because, you know, originally they were talking eight to nine dollars a square foot, but at a couple of meetings that we've had at the uh, Board of Oversight, Waitley was now talking around five dollars a square foot. That's so let's true. just go at the cheap rent, five dollars a square foot. Now they're looking for around twenty-five hundred dollars a month. But when you calculate in the cost of the renovations, it would add an additional six thousand six hundred dollars a month. To that rent for a period of five years so 
when you do that math compared to, you know, mm -hmm. if our building's gonna cost us 2,500 a month, it's a no brainer. You know, we're gonna pay one way or the other. And True. if you wanna keep that service in town, and, and it's, it, to me personally, I think it's important to keep it in town, but also financially, it's a better deal for everybody <coughs> involved. Well, right. I, again, I just feel like it's a discussion item Yep. And until people say yes or no, it's Correct. pretty right. hard to move forward. Right. I mean, you're right. We need to get, we need right. to get people You need to people to say out. yes. Yes, you're They correct. want to take the cost. Right. And if they truly say no, they voted down, then you know what? We move ahead with Whaley and people can't complain. That's, That's right. right. I, mean, I, I mean, I feel like we have to go through the process one way or the other if you're going to legitimately right. get people to buy in to the housing, yeah. whether it's here in town or in Whaley. Or in Whaley. Whaley. They've right. got to pay one way I mean, or the other. I mean, I wasn't flippant when I said we, we really, I mean, I feel like it has to be resolved. And the oh, only it, way it, it does. you get that is to have a realistic town. A realistic option on the town to offer the town, and they have to say yes or no. Right. And then we move forward. Yep. So the expectation is if town meeting approves this, great, you move ahead. If town meeting says no to this, Deerfield signs on completely to the wait we. Well, then, facility. I mean, the only other option on the table is Whaley. Is Whaley, and is there's it? supposed to be a parallel process. Right, they need to put and, it. And, I mean, nothing really changed between August and September's meeting. So, I mean, it's not us holding it up, and that's why I kind of feel like, okay, it it's a time. parallel process. They mm -hmm. haven't moved forward on it. Let's us move forward and, and have our information. Yeah, I think they need to get their... their and then their there's a comparable so information. We don't have any information from Whaley, really. Like oh. you said, the discussion has moved around on square footage costs. Sure. And the rent figure has changed a I little bit. I think until both of us have an engineered plan and a true cost, nobody really knows. Right. And I think once I we agree. get them both together, they've got to do that. We can do this in the meantime, and then we can find out what's the better option right. for the town and hear what they say. Right. Yeah. And, then, and then we always have in the, you know, the option that hopefully we would get it donated anyway. But that would be wonderful. we still have to have that information to right. move forward. Regardless. Yes. We need and, everything. And maybe the donation would be end up towards defraying some of the costs versus right. the actual right. whole donation. Yeah. You know, I mean, who knows what the options are going to be, but I, yeah. I feel like we we got to move forward. We so get yep. so yes. is that? Yep. Okay. I agree with that. I agree with right. that. Yep. So, Doug, can you make sure that we open and close the warrant for next week then and move forward with this? Can I work with you? Could Doug develop an RFP for that? And I could work with him. Not that I don't know if he needs help, but just assistance with I, to, to get. I, I mean. Yeah, sounds good. I yeah. absolutely like it. Okay. I, I think the simpler, more and yep. comprehensive approach would be good. So you have the information. It would not be complicated to, for mm -hmm. Doug to format it. Um, and that would be a good thing. Is that okay with you? That's fine with me. Okay. So you are talking about an article for appropriation on a special town meeting in November. We, want, we, we, we have to vote the land, the use of the land. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think Kip's suggestion that we just make no restriction instead of saying allow EMS use, yeah. just say remove the restriction from highway recreation use to that, whatever. That way, if it doesn't go through, you still have. We still have. No right. It's not a waste of time because we could do something else. Right. Sh should we also take a look at the current lease that South County has with South Deerfield Fire District? and maybe use it as a template of some sort and develop a lease agreement for us to bring to our Board of Oversight meeting at the third week of October? Um, I don't know, because uh, we won't have any numbers, though. Well, I think we will, and... You think by then we'll have if, numbers? If... What I'd like to do is prepare it and get it ready so we can use it. If we don't... If it, we can't bring it completed, then it just sits idle for a little while. I don't have any problems. But let's get, get it going, you know, because it, it's... Take some time. Yeah, it's, it's three weeks away, but, you know, the clock's always ticking, so... Right. I, you could probably just um, download that, right, Doug? I have that document in Word format, so we can tweak and adjust that as needed. Okay. Yeah, yeah well, I, I, why don't you go I ahead? I think that... And, I mean, and, it's not going to hurt. Right. And, and actually, the terms of this would be far simpler, because you're talking about the use of an entire building 
um, that the town of Deerfield would maintain control of the building broadly, would maintain maintenance of the outside spaces, yep. that any interior modifications are to be undertaken by the EMS, that uh, utilities costs would be covered by the EMS in whole, uh, including water, sewer, down the line, um, and that no modification, permanent modification of the facility will be made without approval of the leasing authority, so on and so forth. So yeah, that's, that's easy enough to do. The rest okay. is boilerplate. All right. Yeah. So let's just go ahead. I don't think we need a formal vote on that, or do you think we should? Well, I entertain a motion to cover all those items. Is there a second? Second. I'll second. Is there any further co discussion? No. No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay, it's official so vote. All, all those items will all include those items. the drafting of a warrant article for the appropriation, a drafting of a warrant article for the change in the use of the land, the development of a lease, well, I'll call it development of a draft model lease, mm -hmm. which would also be in, number four, the development of a um, request for proposals yeah. for design build services. Yeah, that Kibby's going to work with you. To be drafted on. Okay. okay. That way it's kind of official because we've actually voted on it. Yep. I have a question kind of related, and Carolyn or Doug might know. I got a copy of the original lease agreement from 2014 to 2015 uh, with the South Deerfield Fire District. And I noticed that the Board of Oversight didn't sign it. It was signed by all three member towns. And I was just curious as to why the we three towns did it instead of just Deerfield, because Deerfield's board, oh, this isn't all of it. it oh, oh, this is just did you have the, because it depends on who signed it. Well, um, it, it the Board of Selectmen from Waitley and Sunderland signed it, as well as the Board of Selectmen from Deerfield. But since the Board, I mean, since the, you know, the Board of Deerfield is the fiscal agent, shouldn't they have been the only one to sign it? I, I mean, there's not a real problem with that. But I, I, I'm going somewhere with this. So, but I'm wondering uh, if they they had to put up, you know, they're putting up money too. But I guess that's probably a different. They, they approve that by implicit approval through town meeting but right. um, because any lease payments are, are part of the appropriation yeah. and when each town approves the appropriation they're improving they're essentially approving what the purpose so, is. Um, mm. the when, board of oversight so, doesn't really sign stuff it, they, yeah, it they comes, okay. it's supposed to come to right, us right the board of oversight so, is supposed to manage internally i think you're probably onto something where the town of deerfield really is the the authority by which right. these agreements are constituted. It's, com it's, it's complicated because if you look at the Board of Oversight, there's, you know, um, Waitley Select Board, Sunderland Select Board, is, and then us. Right. So it... I, my next question is, it's diff I mean, both it's the other community towns rent space to South County EMS. Mm -hmm. So when, let's just take Sunderland. When Sunderland developed a lease for their garage space for that ambulance, did the Deerfield or the selectmen sign that lease as well? I think we did. Okay. I think we signed to everybody because. All right. Just, I don't recall. I, think, so it. I, I don't. So I mean, my, my I'm last not, question. Don't hold me to it, but I'm pretty sure we all signed okay. everybody's, everybody's lease. lease. The last question I have is that I did see all of the board's signatures on that original lease, but the lease was changed, and I've yet to see a signed lease. Did you sign another lease last year when they changed when the pre it? When the prices changed? When the prices changed. No. I don't think so. Okay. Because I think it was just a renewal. Well, this is a big thing. The lease agreement, I don't have the original with me, but the lease agreement said that it started July 1, 14, and ran through July 1 of 15. 15 right. And the language says that this this lease agreement, which let me back up, the price on that was $18,000 annually. Mm -hmm. The agreement said this lease agreement can be extended for an additional 12-month period if both parties agree to that. And apparently they did because they're still in that location. But the price changed. If you didn't sign a new contract, they should be held to that $18,000 thing because it said if this lease agreement, mm. it didn't say anything about price changing, so if they changed the price, did in fact you sign a new lease because that would constitute a new lease. And that's all I'm wondering. Where are you going with that? No, I, I'm just wondering, was a new lease signed 
or did they and if change? a new lease was not signed where are you going with that and we technically don't have a lease in uh, correct and the in with the expiration of the lease in 2016 you become a tenant at will um, which means that all of the previous uh, arrangement, all the previous rights and responsibilities of both parties right. are dissolved essentially, right. and they're continuing to let the EMS be there by their own good graces right. at whatever cost that they choose to charge. It's true. The expectation, though, is that the lease payment went up to 36000 for FY17. FY17 yeah. for this current year. Okay. Um, and it was I don't recall. Well, going I mean, up. that's part of the pressure of moving on. And the reason it was going up was because, um, what, what was the rationale for? for oh, I, I don't really know. And, and I guess where, where, where my thought of all this is if a new lease was not, you know, signed, then, as Doug suggested, then the ambulance is a tenant at, at will. So that means if this new building gets done whenever, we could just move out and not be obligated. And I'm not saying that the fire district would hold us to that, but that's, I'm, I just wanted the clarity to know, you know which, which way are we dealing with this. I, I know Deerfield is a fiscal agent, but um, I wasn't the fiscal agent until July 1st, so mm. I don't know these things. Okay. We'll have to track it down. Because right. I asked, I did go to Brenda. And I asked her, and all she had was the very original one. She, she had nothing new, And I asked I do Kevin, remember them talking about it going up, and the reason it was going up was right. because, um, do you recall? I mean, there I was a real that conversation. I, I, I thought just rumor, this is hearsay, that yeah. the reason it was going up was because uh, I think the other towns were charging money and they and they felt like well if you're going to be here we we deserve to get this much because now oh before it was that's right before it was just de uh just deerfield ems paying rent and so that's why the rent was low and now that it became a three town enterprise they weren't subsidizing the other two towns they were saying look we need to get this amount of money so that's why i think it went up because it was a it was right. a different entity now in there it wasn't just deerfield ems right. But, but I, I don't know where if if anybody signed a lease for that new one. Right. That, and that's that's, what I that's, was that's looking a good for. question. There might be somewhere, but I'm not sure. I'm gotta be. I'm confident that the documents exist. I would think okay. so. Um, we'll just need to look for them. Yeah. Okay. Not I, having I, received a request to find them at all. Right. But Brenda, give, does, give me does, 24 hours. Do you yeah. keep that kind of stuff? Broadly up? speaking, Brenda keeps contracts, but there are many contracts that she may or may not okay. have, depending on who the parties are. Okay. Yeah. And this being a party of, of three you know, three towns essentially and the fire district, yeah. it could be that the contract never made her way, okay. made her way to her. We're so. tightening up this kind of stuff, Kip. Okay. I mean, yeah, I, I, it's just we're going to make that sure I, that we're a little bit more organized. Mm -hmm. So I just, it's just something that I've seen, so I just, I just I want to know. Sure. Okay. I just can't remember one way or the other, so I hate to okay. give wrong information. All right. Well, that's it for this. If you want to move on. Okay. Um, I think we're pretty clear that we yep, are yep. supportive. So thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is declaration of surplus property. Um, the chief has two old Crown Vicks. One was kept. Uh, we had put it up for surplus before, and it, the bid was it was. A, I guess the high bid was 400 bucks, mm -hmm. So the chief decided to keep it. Uh, it was best interest of the town to keep it for parts. And then he had another one um, that we've been using for details and that kind of thing. Now, uh, both of them are pretty expended, and he would like them to be moved on. So um, um, I did get updated information from, uh, I'm pretty sure it was Brian Ravish. Um, I could be wrong on that. Um, one is actually a 2010, the other is a 2011. The one has 160,000 miles on it, the other has 180,000 miles on it. And I have VIN numbers for both. Um, okay, the, oh the, yeah, right here. I did check with both Kevin. Uh, I checked with Kevin actually mm -hmm. about potential reuse of these vehicles somewhere else in town. He said absolutely not. I asked him about whether these are in better shape than the Ford Explorer that's currently being used by the inspections department. He said absolutely not. These things are tired iron. Um, okay. And so he agrees with the request to put these out to um, surplus property and to to get them sold. So there would just would there be a we we put, put them out to sealed IFB. Uh, it's a it's a formal process, and we accept sealed bids. 
And people say, I'll pay this much, and whoever yep. the high bidder is. Whoever's the high bidder, right. Okay. The one thing I will advise is that if, um, if you do open the sealed bids, and let's say you get a bid for $300 and a bid for $350 and a bid for $400, and the guy who was there said, oh, I would have given you $500. I didn't know it was going to mm -hmm. be there. I only bid three. I would have given you five. You can accept his bid. Oh. If someone who didn't participate in the bidding process says, well, I'll give you six, you can accept his bid. Hmm. Simply by issuance of the IFB and acceptance of the bids, you can accept a higher bid later if on. If they come in right then. Or um, even, even if they come the in a day or two later, so long as you haven't formally transferred the vehicle to the other to the person who was declared the high bid, huh. it's you've still satisfied public procurement. So, can you put those out to auction? Um, I yeah, would they go down? I uh, think you could. I think you would get next to nothing, and you'd wind up paying more in auction fees than the vehicles are worth. Okay. I think so, that's why we haven't sure. done it in the past. And it's far easier to simply just do it locally. Kind of Even if you sell it for three, four, five hundred dollars, uh, then all you're doing is you're signing the title and right. handing the car over. No, that's all you have to do. I, so. I know that the ambulance people were looking for a quote chase vehicle. I don't know what that entails. Are they just looking for a vehicle to ride around? I, I don't mean it like it sounds right around town, but just to conduct business around town, the three towns, or were they looking for an actual vehicle that would chase the ambulance to bring more people with it? I don't know. Um, would one of those cruises be good for them? To I mean, if we're going to get three, four hundred dollars for it, we could almost donate it to to them to use as a vehicle around I, I, my impression is that these are so beat that they're not reliable okay. so all right um we have in the past kept um the older cruisers john has been really careful to make sure we use them as long as possible mm -hmm. and then he puts them as detail because from oh, a public safety, safety point a, of view right yep, yep. but I, I think these have gone beyond even beyond being even able that. to do details i have another idea okay no that's fine I'm, I'm full and only because I've seen this an awful lot and you know I'm I drive a lot and uh, sometimes I'm not so careful as how fast I go so I'm very careful I'm always watching for police cars as well oh. as the, so you know where this is going I can't tell you how many times <laughs> I've been outside the area and I see a cruiser and I slow down and I get there either one there's nobody in it or there's a mannequin in it <laughs> we should so, put a mannequin and put it on Sugarloaf Street oh, I was gonna say it? on route five <laughs> they could move it and you know i mean maybe residents would but there's a lot of people that travel that road and they see mm -hmm. the cruiser and they slow down and we I move it around a little bit <laughs> i i don't know my I, impression of these is they're pretty dead okay because we we like i said we kept the other one okay. for parts so i think yeah. it's been a little bit okay they do still run in them. they do still run and drive but yeah. um i think the the impetus for getting rid of these is that we are getting the the new cruiser is arriving, you know, any day, any week, um, and the chief will have a full stable of the uh, the interceptors. Um, so instead of relying on the old Crown Vix, we, he'll have five of the, the larger Ford Explorer size interceptor vehicles. We, we couldn't keep it for the next uh, demo. Uh, Town of no. Deerfield really hasn't <laughs> been in the business of supplying a demo because somebody else will buy it for exactly that. All right, well that's so, perfect. As long as they well, keep the Deerfield police we have, on the side. We have gotten our thirty-four thousand dollars out of this car. <laughs> okay. okay. Yes. I think okay. I, I honestly feel like it is pretty dead if they all, right. all are saying it's Sounds dead. Sounds good. So well, I make a I, motion to declare the two Crown Victorian police cruisers as surplus and dispose of them by seal bid. I second the motion. Is there any further discussion? No. Nope. No. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Make okay. that unanimous. Doug. The next item on the agenda is um, short-term borrowing from Barb. It's a request <coughs> to do um, a bond anticipation note. This is six-month borrowing. Um, interest rate will be determined by open bidding process. Um, this is for the a roof that we should be reimbursed for. Um, right. Up to, up to this point, Barb has been covering the expenses related to the elementary school roof project uh, using free cash. Mm -hmm. And it's now coming to the point where the mid to late autumn, it's, it's tight cash-wise anyways, and she does not want to risk going too low. Yeah. So she's asking for the $1.5 million borrowing. It's a short-term borrowing, six months. Um, it's gone out to bid already to get mm -hmm. the best possible uh, interest rate. Uh, she will choose, of course, the best possible rate. She, that happens, I think, tomorrow. She should have paperwork by Thursday or Friday. She's looking for approval on behalf of the board and willingness to sign once the paperwork is ready to go. Yeah. 
Um, truthfully, she has authority by town meeting. She, yeah. is she, but, she's given authority to borrow. But, sure. Yes. Um, but she, she wants likes to, make sure to, she likes to make sure that we're fully informed, yeah. yep. which I, I, I totally spoke to agree her the other day yeah. about it. Yep. Yep. For, I, I don't have a problem with it, but nope. I do have a question. Uh, I remember seeing a document when I first became a selectman through some bank approving our request for this project. And I'm just curious, why why would it not come from there instead of looking um, because when she goes out it might might likely be right Doug um, she, got she, got she got approval for the bond What's that? For, she got approval for the bond which okay. is the permanent the 20-year borrowing okay. for an amount up to 2.968 which was the estimated cost of the project right. I mean, that's what I was yeah looking at. this but, is just yeah. short-term borrowing okay. but we don't but, know who is gonna have the lowest rate at the bid right. time I mean right. it could be that bank but so the know. process works, but that doesn't happen until all the paperwork is done, and then we and all the reimbursements are gotten from MSBA. Okay. Then, okay. then this borrowing, the short-term borrowing, covers us through that period. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, hopefully it'll only be eventually maybe one point something, one point one million that we're actually doing the long-term borrowing on. Did, do so. you have a clue as to the final cost of that? Have you seen any figures? No, my only rough estimates are for the roof project yeah. in total. Mm -hmm. yeah. 2.2 to 2.3 million, which is about 600,000 less than we expected because yep. the construction yep. cost was about 600,000 less than we yes. expected. Okay. So. And we get more than 50% reimbursement yep. plus um, yeah. we had donation towards it as well. We have commitments for donation. We haven't seen the money yet. So I know. Well, our, our good friends who made those commitments will have to be reminded. <laughs> <laughs> I think we will. Be able to remind them. Yes. So okay. I approve the uh, make a motion to approve the short term borrowing and authorize uh, uh, board members to sign upon completion of documents for well, the short term borrowing of the DES, DES roof. I'll second the motion. Um, is there any further discussion? No. Nope. No. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Doug, just make sure you tell Barbara thank you. Will do. Mm -hmm. um, I will entertain a motion to go into um, executive session for the purpose of collective bargaining discussion. Um, Do you know what what um, reason is that, Doug? Uh, collective bargaining in relation to the uh, police CBA. Oh yes, but um, what reason is it on the? Uh, what number? I don't recall off the top of my okay. head. Um, six or seven, possibly. I guess we can just say it's for collective. Bargaining. Okay, right. I make a motion to go into um, collective bargaining. Or the executive section for collective bargaining. Discuss the strategy respective to yep. collective bargaining. Yeah. I'll second the motion. Sorry. Um, Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Henry Camosa. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.